So, this is where I keep my batteries. I keep them inside. I don't ever have my batteries out in the winter time because um, it freezes the acid and water in there. It freezes the cell and it causes it to expand and bloat and crack. Um, two of your hardest things um, on any battery, your two number one things that cause batteries to fail that I know of, and if you know some other things, comment below, but is extreme heat and extreme cold. Now where I live, I'm not sure of either one. In the summer, it gets between 90 and 100 degrees. In the wintertime, um, we're you know, below freezing. We get a lot of snow here. Um, so I always bring my batteries inside. I like to put them on a uh, piece of uh, wood um, just to keep them up off the ground. And then I usually put a float charger on there um, so that um, they're always just getting the smallest amount of juice all winter long. Um, the shop here is usually a um, little above freezing. It's usually, you know, 35 degrees to 70 degrees most year round. Um, I sh it wouldn't be a bad behavior for me to pull these in the summertime, but I don't. But in the wintertime, before I put the RV trailer away, these definitely come out of the RV trailer. They do not sit out there because it gets really cold out there in the night. The other common sense things um, that I do with my batteries that um, maybe other people don't do because they've never been taught, but keeping the water topped off on these. I've always got distilled water around my shop for multiple uses. Um, I get the distilled stuff because there's no minerals um, in there, um, and that's what you're supposed to use to keep these topped off. So I'm going to grab my funnel and my water and we're going to start topping these off making sure that the water line is above the plates on the inside of this battery. It doesn't take a whole lot of water. Just enough to cover those plates that are down in there. They're kind of hard to see, but you just don't want those plates exposed. You can see this one's got, you can see how the water's floating above those plates down in there. That's what you want. Usually it doesn't take much. In the summertime though, on those hot, hot days, I have to go camping out in the desert. When I come home, I'm always checking my water level because those uh, charger, in, those charge controllers inside your RVs, those things just blast your batteries. Then after I've got the water um, in there, I just stick this cap on there, tighten this back down. These are kind of nice. Sometimes you'll see some batteries that have just got literally a cap. Um, I always put a my safety glasses on and um, I just take a flathead screwdriver and I wedge it in underneath the cap and I'll pry the caps off. Um, those are also batteries um, that you can just like I said pop the caps off and um, put your water in there and then uh, carefully tap those caps back on. But the way they have this particular battery design done you just twist that and you pull that off. Makes it super nice for maintaining these. After I get my um, batteries all topped off with distilled water um, and I've got them out of the bad weather, I like to put a uh, float charger on them. This is just a 12 volt, very low amperage float charger. I run my batteries in series. Um, that's a whole other topic to get into that I'm not gonna get into here. If you want to get into 
uh, RV batteries, uh, 6 volt versus 12 volt, parallel versus uh, series. That's a whole other argument, a um, whole other discussion. I'll let you search the YouTube uh, Wonder World and uh, let you make your own decision on that. I've decided to go with series. But with that being said, I just have this cheap float charger. I'll put a link down below in the uh, description and to where you can get one of those. And this is it. This is all I do. I keep them topped off with water. I keep them out of the elements. I put them on this board. There's lots of other discussions on, you know, putting them up on a board versus having them sitting on the ground. And these batteries have lasted me a few years. I've been really happy with it. You know, and these are 100, 150 bucks a piece, and these are the off-brand. These aren't even the Trojan ones. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll unhook this battery cable, and I'll show you what the voltage is on this real quick. Um, these have been sitting out here doing their thing. <sighs> Turn this. If you don't have a voltmeter, a multimeter, you need to get one. But as you can see there, 12.15. Not bad. If you learned anything from this video, you know, if you appreciate it, you know, I'd really appreciate one of those thumbs up from you down below. It really helps the channel. We appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're into this kind of thing, you might consider subscribing too. If you've got any helpful comments for the community, um, I appreciate it when you share those uh, down below. Um, if you want to be aggressive and hateful and uh, non-constructive, uh, go ahead and uh, leave those below and I'll make sure to uh, delete them and uh, banish you from my channel. So, um, But like I said, if you've got constructive criticisms, those can be put down below in a kind enough way where you're not being a keyboard warrior or troll. So with that being said, we appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you out on the road in your RV, I hope. Thanks again.